afternoon, everybody. It's Cindy and Christy with Candles and Supplies, and today is super exciting for me, anyway, because um, yeah, we're making wax macarons. I've been addicted to these, like since we were playing with them. But I've been addicted since we uh, we played with our new fragrance, the pistachio macaron. So absolutely incredible. I put it in a regular candle at first, but then I'm like, I kind of want it in like a macaron shape because that's super fun. So then I got yeah. started making these and I couldn't stop. And it's really fun and addicting. So this is a very addicting episode. Just warning you, Google macarons. You get like all different things. You can get so creative with it and it's so easy. So I think that's why it's so addicting. So instant gratification into fun things. Different fragrances, different colors. There's a lot of options with that. Exactly. <laughs> They're so easy that you can't really screw them up. So, and if you do, you just throw them back in the melter and remelt them. So, sure. so obviously we're starting with wax and color and scent and everything. And we also have this macaron mold. Yeah. The mold is key. Otherwise, it'd be really hard to make them. It is. Yeah, it would be really <laughs> hard to make them and stuff like that. And the thing I like about this one, so like for me, if you're duplicating a food thing. You should make it look at least as good or better than the food that you're duplicating. So a lot of the macaron molds on the market are like a one piece, one pour, but then you get that flat bottom for when you pour mm -hmm. the wax in. Well, right. that doesn't look real. They're smooth and wonderful and delicious on both sides. So I like this mold so that it, because it makes a completely 3D macaron. You can make it on both sides and everything, but it is a two piece mold. So you would pour the two halves. And I pre-poured in here so that you wouldn't have to wait a half hour for the wax to pour before we pop these out and use them. Um, so you pour both sides and then you basically put them together. So, and that's it. It's very easy. <laughs> um, so we poured these in advance. We're going to pop them out of mold now. Just, they look like little halves when you pop them out. Talk a little bit about the waxes. So I did experiment with the waxes and everything because that's always a big question. Uh, what wax do you use? What wax do you use? So I experimented with all of the ones. I didn't use any translucent paraffins because macarons yeah, shouldn't translucent. be translucent. They have to be opaque, right? They have to be solid. They have to be opaque and delicious looking. So I cut out all of our translucent paraffins. Will they work? Yes. Will you want to put an additive in them to make them more opaque? Yes. We're not getting into that wax blending today. We're just getting into using the waxes that are already suited for making this. And all you need to do is add color and scent. Simple and easy. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Yep. So the first wax that I tried, obviously, was soy, so our advanced soy filler blend. And that worked pretty good. So they make like a nice, smooth macaron. It worked really good. Um, it did take a long time for them to cool. So it's a very shallow mold. And I felt like, I mean, me being impatient, I wanted it to be done in like 15 minutes. But it took a full hour before I was I could pull them out of the mold. So to make, to wait an hour for that, that was, you know, I didn't like that. Um, I like the way they look, though. And I like how they, they melt down in the wax melter because they melt right away. And they're all soy. So if you want an all plant-based option, that's a good option. When I poured it cooler temperatures in there, you can see the jump lines on it and stuff. So they just a little bit of white on the outside. It looked quite as smooth and crispy as I wanted to. But then the darker green one, I poured it like a higher temperature, like 170. It turned out better. It was nice and smooth and everything. And then I did have to be careful when I took them out of the mold because soy wax is more brittle than paraffin. It's not flexible. It has no sense of humor. So when you take them out, be super, super careful that they don't break. Um, so I used that one. And then I went from all soy to all paraffin. I used our production filler blend and I used our production voted blend. I like both of them equally. They made a nice smooth melt, nice and easy to use. They popped out of the mold. Within a half hour, they were, you know, um, I wasn't afraid that they were going to break or anything like that. If I really messed around with the pouring temperature, I poured them at like about 160. If I went lower, like if I poured at 150 or lower, then they would pop out sooner. But, you know, I don't want to wait for you. You're waiting for the wax to pour, waiting for the macarons to pour. I didn't want to wait, so I just poured. But they turned out good each time. No problems at all. Um, the difference between the two waxes, the pillar is a little bit higher of a melt point. So if you end up, you know, making a candle out of this with a little wick in it, like a little votive size macaron candle, um, I would use the pillar blend just because it's going to hold up a little better for you as far as when it's burning. It's not going to get, you know, melted down as fast. The votive blend's very nice. It'll do the same thing. I would use, you know, like a cotton wick or cotton votive wick or something, just something a little bit cooler. It should melt nice for you. It'll also make a nice wax melt. So they, they were perfect great. for a wax melt. So cute. Yeah, put in there. they are very, very yeah. cute. Wax. They, they scream thing. wax melt or soap. So you can also use soap in this. It's oh, yeah. geared towards wax, but you can also pour melt and pour soap in it. Works good with melt and pour soap too. So um, you would do it the same way, just pretend I'm saying soap instead of wax. 
substitute. Use soap dye instead of candle dye. Same thing though, mm -hmm. it, makes, it makes really good macarons um, with soap as well. And then the last one that I used was our hybrid. It's half soy, half paraffin. Um, and that was actually my favorite because it gave me the nice, the creamy look like the, um, you know, like the soy wax does, um, but I got the, it cooled faster like paraffin does, and it also was not as brittle. So they turned out really, really nice, nice and smooth. Um, that was actually my favorite one. Popped out of the mold easy. They melt down nice and easy. So, so that one will probably feature in our blog post as you think, but I did try the other ones and I'll put in there, you know, the benefits and uh, pros and cons of each wax using it and stuff like that and challenges. That way, if you do decide if you want to do all soy or whatever, you'll know that, okay, it's going to take a little while to cool. I need to pour it a little hotter. You know, I'm not going to have jump lines. So that way it takes some of the experimentation out of it for you. Um, each of them also, it, this will make three macarons at a time. It holds 5.5 ounces of waxes or 150 grams. For me, it's easier to work in 150 grams because... Yeah. Precise exactly. You weigh out 150 grams and, you know, 10% is 15 grams. So you need 15 grams of fragrance. You know, my wax holds that. And then pour the wax in, uh, the rest of the, the wax into 150 grams. And then you only need one drop of dye. Sometimes one drop of dye can be very, very dark. So like when I went to doing a, the lavender macarons, I used one drop of dye in here and I got this dark color. Well, that wasn't quite the color that I wanted. And then what I did is add, just added another 150 grams of wax and got that lighter lavender color so I can get the lavender macaron. So any of the dyes will work. I did not try this with any type of, of the coconut waxes or the soy, just plain soy waxes because it's too brittle. You know, you're handling it a lot and stuff like that. It's its own shape and stuff. I just feel like those waxes are a little too soft and too brittle. I'm not saying that you can't do it, but um, that's the type of thing that you know could frustrate your life and make you curse. So I didn't do it. I stuck with something that I knew would work. Try to make things easy. <laughs> exactly. To make these, you just heat up the wax and pour it in the mold. Wait your half hour. So we're going to pretend that we did all that. So the next part is where you want to put your two pieces together. Because we get the two halves after we pop them out of the mold. We want to put them together. They're not going to stick together like it is. So what you do is just save a little bit leftover wax. If you heat gun, so like we're only going to put a little bit of melted wax on one side. If you heat gun it, um, I tried heat gun on both sides and then putting them together. That was kind of a pain because what I lost all this cool detail. So you see, you got like little crumbs are on the outside, like a, not crumbs, the but the, the filling yeah. part of it. You have lots of nice detail when you heat gun it. That's the first thing that goes and then it becomes all smooth and then it goes around to the bottom and you got wax drips on the mess. bottom. Yeah. So I wasn't successful at that. That didn't work out so well. Let me grab some wax here. So this is already melted. So what you want to do... This wax was already heated and cooled. It has a little skin on the top. And we just want it to be real thick and syrupy, right? If you pour like real hot wax, it's very thin. So we just want this to be syrupy. I'm going to squish it around. I used okay. a little melting pot because we can see everything easy and it's easier to do. Yeah. So, so it's still, it's very thick, but still pourable. So, so what you're going to do, on. you have poured on, you only pour it on one side. You don't need it on both sides. And you kind of want to fill it up, but not overfill it. Leave a little gap around the outside. So Okay, yep, that's good. And even if you drip a little on the side, don't worry about it. Take the other half and put it right on there. Wax's temperature isn't that hot, so yeah, <laughs> moving around a little yeah, bit. Just put the other side on the top. Yeah. Usually it should pour out nicer for you. And it doesn't matter if it oozes out, that's what real macarons do. So you can take that off at the end, just squish it together. Yeah. And then it should stick together magically. Yep. Show them your swirling. So she's just wrong. That'll cool it off. You can also, it cools off real quick in the resin. The 5.5 ounces, it leaves just enough left over to where you can put all your macarons together. Yep. I tried pouring the wax on both sides and squishing them together to too have a little more icing. Yeah, too much went all over the place. So again, not not what was needed. Put a little bit more on this time, so maybe we'll get some squishes. Squishes through, yeah. I don't think any squishes on the outside. Yeah, that's fine. Too. Apparently, I'm a light pourer. That's fine too. That's fine. Less mess though. I like exactly. less mess. Beautiful. Let's go back to waxes. Let's let's rewind. Go back to waxes for a bit. So I also poured um, just a, no color or anything like that. So no color, no scent in wax. Yeah, use that one. Doesn't have a hole in it. 
So this is what the soy wax looked like. It's a more natural color and stuff, a very vanilla color. So very, if you're doing a vanilla macaron, it's excellent. And oh then, yeah, perfect for doing that. Yeah. And then this is out of the paraffin. So it's very white. Yeah, so that's what they look like together. So you can see the soy is a more natural color. And which is, you know, it, yeah. it's food and it's fine. But if you're going for a coconut macaron, I would not use that. It doesn't look coconut. Yeah. Going for a vanilla one, it does look vanilla. So so the 1285 is a little more natural color, still very white. So this wax is completely liquid in here. I don't know if you can see it. This is what's left over from there. If you just swirl it around, this will congeal up real fast. Keep it till, so swirl it up till it's thick, but you just want it to be pourable. It thickens up quick. If it thickens up quick, get your heat gun out, heat it up with the heat gun. Put your little heat gun there. Yeah. Go right on top, it'll melt that in there. Worst comes to worst, they don't stick together, and you just heat up your wax and pour it on. So it's a good way. This is a good way to play with your wax too and get to know it and everything. So I always say that get to know, know, love, use your product, know what it's going to do. So, and that makes really nice wax melts. So the only the easiest way to turn this into a little votive candle or votive size candle, um, get a drill bit with the seven. 764 inch drill bit, and then you can just take your macaron. Be very careful. You want to go slow so it doesn't break. And just drill nice and slow. And then you can just put a pre tablet in there. Super cute. Super cute. Makes it into a little candle. Yeah, so you can do those by themselves. You could also put it on. We have the the 17 ounce, like luxury tumblers and stuff too. Mm -hmm. You can put it in like a candle too. It's a cute little on a candle. Um, oh my gosh, that would be so cute with some macaron sticking out the top. All right, that's what I figured. Yeah, uh, like some little ones like kind of in, some on the side. Yeah. Be super yeah. cute. Yeah, they do make so. a good garnishment. Actually, yeah. You can put them in the tumbler too. And they also, they're easy to package too. So like these fit, we can fit eight of these in our little, uh, the pie box that we sell for our four inch pies. You can fit eight in there. We have a clear box display that fits about 10 in there. And you go like um, real ones like come back when they're sold in the yep. clear boxes a lot. Yes. Stack yeah. together. Because they're fun and colorful and everything. So yeah. so they're fun to package too. You can use a cello bag. So whatever. Yeah, you can do that. You can also do, um, if you shrimp crop them individually, you can do like a mixed pack and have a bunch of different ones. Mm -hmm. Same. Mm -hmm. So what would do good. without the shrimp crop? Yeah, that would keep the sense. Blend, but the sense. Yeah. Separate shrimp, shrimp crop all can be cute together. Nice little mix. Aren't they fun? They're very fun. I told you they're fun because you're just working with your hands. It's nice and easy. It's, you know, creative without breaking your brain. So they're just yeah. a lot of fun. Like sometimes you, you need a break. break. You, a you break do. You do. It's like a good relaxation thing. And that's all we got. That is nice and easy. So thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Have a great week. Stay cool out there. Make some macarons because they're super fun. So. Yeah, they, uh, all, the, all the supplies for work is on our website, so yep. click on there, find that. We'll put a blog yeah. post in the next couple of days, and it'll all be linked there to make it a little easier for you. Exactly. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody, for joining. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.